Well, hey, we are in the midst of a series called Hidden Treasures. There's nothing like a good treasure hunt, right? Um, Let me ask you this question. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You ever been there? Uh, You got a decision to make, but you're not quite sure what is the right decision to make. Uh, Now, here's the reality. Some choices in this life are just really easy. When people ask me chocolate or vanilla, I'm going to choose chocolate every time. Maybe you're a vanilla person. Where's my vanilla people? Yep, vanilla. And who's my chocolate people? Yep, about half half and half. I think there's a little more chocolate people. I think chocolate might be the winner today. Uh, If you were to ask me, hey, where do you want to go on vacation? Do you want to go to Florida or Antarctica? That's a pretty easy decision. I will go to Florida, (laughs) hands down. Every time. Uh, If you ask me, hey, do you want to play pickleball or tennis? We're pickleball people. Yeah. Destiny, we were out playing pickleball a few weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. I think you beat me, didn't you? She's like, yes, I did, Pastor. I beat you. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I let you in. No, I'm playing. I I remember the day I made the biggest, one of the biggest decisions of my life to marry my husband. Can I tell you that was an easy decision? I was an easy one, babe, because I've been listening to God, and God had spoken to me, so I knew what to do, and, and some decisions are harder than others. I remember a few years ago, God had put on my heart to plant a church, and I had to make the decision when I was going to resign from my job, when I was actually going to send the email and tell them the date that I was leaving, leaving my salary leaving my benefits, leaving all my good coworkers and my nice, cushy little office. And I remember getting ready to hit that send button. Can I tell you, that was a hard decision to make. You've been there when you have to make the hard decisions. The common denominator in life is that we all have daily decisions, and some of them are really crystal clear, and some of them are very complicated. How many know it can get complicated making decisions, right? So let me ask you this. How do you make decisions? How do you decide what to decide? Some of you are real process people, uh, like Vanessa. How she said, I- I'm a slow th- processor, right? Some of you sit down with your pros and cons list, right? And you say, okay, you, you measure what are, what are the risks, right? You do the SWOT analysis, right? And you decide, hey, what what could go wrong here? What could go right here? Uh, Some of you just go with your gut. How many have ever made a decision you just kind of go with your gut? You're like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go with my gut, right? And let me ask you this. Why is decision-making so important? Uh, The reality is that there are decisions that have minimal impact on my life. Nobody cares whether I go eat lunch at Chick-fil-A or Dick's Burgers. Only my gut really is going to notice the difference. I will pick Chick-fil-A every day. Um, But many decisions that you and I make have lasting impact beyond just lunch, right? Uh, For future generations, the the friends you decide to hang out with, right? The the person you decide to marry if you get married. Uh, The career and the job that you choose because the reality is our Decisions determine our destiny. And making decisions, it can get messy, right? Because there's uncertainty and there's questions that we ask. And God knew we needed help in making the big decisions and the small decisions. And and often decision-making can kind of feel like a battleground where there's two opposing decisions. Anybody ever play Battleship growing up? Anybody, this, when my brother and my sister, when we were growing up, I loved me some Battleship. But here's the funny thing when you're playing Battleship. You're just guessing. You're like, I can't see what you got over there, but uh, D4, I don't know, hit or miss, right? And some of our decision making, we just kind of wing it, and sometimes we hit, and sometimes we miss, right? But godly wisdom is our greatest weapon when it comes to the battleground of decision-making. God wants to give you wisdom. He doesn't want you 
just hitting or missing and just guessing. And God has hidden treasures of wisdom and scripture that give us everything we need. And the reality is God has hidden these treasures for us. He's not hidden them from us. He wants us to discover these treasures in his word. So we're going to look in God's word this morning. I want to welcome Pastor Kim and Joseph to the table. Give them a hand as they come. What's one of the hardest decisions that you've ever had to make? Hard decisions. Yeah, well, entering adulthood is kind of weird. Um, I'm sure most of us struggle can agree is with real. That. Um, struggle is real. But what was odd for me uh, entering adulthood is that, um, dr- like, the way that you handle dreams is a bit different. Like, when you're a kid, uh, dreaming is kind of the easy thing to do. Right. Yeah. Uh, and most recently, I entered a season where I was just full of disappointment. It was just disappointment yeah. left and right, wow. and it was just a really difficult season. Mm. Uh, and I had always held the dream that I wanted to become a homeowner. Yeah. Um, and everything in the world was telling me that, you know, this is a terrible dream. This, you mm. know, the interest rates are rising, right. yeah. housing prices right. are going up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and for the first time, dreaming became the hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and choosing to let the dream of becoming a homeowner was yeah. like one of the hardest things to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just so happened to, you know, grab a hold of that dream, and I, I fought really hard to keep that dream yeah. alive, and, yeah. you know, it actually ended up paying off. Wow. But one of the most difficult, most grueling things to do, to be honest, yeah. entering adulthood. But yes. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I think for me, by far the hardest um, decision that I've had to make in 1997, I was mm. put in a position to raise um, my biological great niece. Mm at six weeks old. My, six my weeks. baby was 10 years old. Wow. So I was out of the formula right. diaper, <laughs> right. kind of just, yeah, no, I'm not even You'd the babysitting on. auntie, yeah. right? I'm the, you're so cute, go home with your mommy, auntie, <laughs> and uh, yes. buy them whatever they want, but you can't stay all night, That's right? right. Um, but just put in a situation where uh, God presented the opportunity, the necessity, let me say yeah. it that way, for me to raise my great niece at six weeks old. Tomorrow she will be 27, shout out to Christina. Um, I adopted her, Um, the adoption went through at the age of two. She's been my baby, but that was by far the hardest. I knew God told me, I heard his voice. Hmm. I was remember in my laundry room audibly, I heard Mm. the Lord say, I need you to do this. I want you to do this if you obey me. I will bless you. Incredible. And in the, with uh, some all detergent in my hand, I said, I'm already <laughs> blessed. I'm blessed because you, I was able to get my yeah. baby to 10 years old. Wow. This is not God. Wow. I bind the enemy. <laughs> get out of the laundry room. <laughs> and when the, when the call came, um, they brought her to my home. My children said, Mom, whatever you do, don't let her go. Oh. Mm. And wow. so when my three babies looked up at me, they mm-hmm. said, we'll, we won't ask for toys. Mm. keeper oh. and I've and I and it was difficult it was yeah. a difficult transition yeah. difficult for my family um just a wow. tough situation um you know I remember my mom saying you don't have to do that you right. know there's families out there that will love her and the Lord yeah. said I've ordained yeah. you to do it that's right and that's she's, right. she'll turn 27 wow. incredible tomorrow. yeah incredible yeah Hard I love decision. it yeah you know I, I want us to we're going to talk about a few hidden treasures that are going to help us in our decision making. And, and I want us to grab a hold of this concept that these are principles, not promises, right? Yeah. Sometimes we can say, but God said this, you That's know, it. And, and these are godly principles. So Joseph, tell us about the first one. Yeah. Well, the first one starts with trust. Uh, I mean, we're yeah. talking about making good decisions. And yeah. I think, you know, the first thing that we have to start thinking about when we, um, you know, take advice from people mm-hmm. is is trust. Like, yeah. what, what voice can we trust? Yeah, um, that's good. You know, I was talking about entering adulthood earlier. And w- when you enter adulthood, there are so many decisions that you have to make. Yeah. yeah. And so many hard decisions. Uh, and a lot of decisions or a lot of situations that you just simply don't know what to do in. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And you really have to kind of look around and see who has... Uh, who's got the game plan, right? Yeah, like, who yeah. has the advice that I need? Who has already been through this before? Right. Um, that's usually what I do when I face a situation that I've never encountered before. Yeah. Maybe I, you know, 
look it up on Google or something like, oh, you know, buying a house 101. I don't know. Right. <laughs> uh, or I like look it up on ChatGPT now. Thanks. Right. Right. It's great. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, when we face situations that we've never encountered before, we have to find the people that have the wisdom on the topic. Yeah. Uh, for good. example, if, if I have a medical problem, I'm going to talk to my father-in-law, who's an actual medical doctor. <laughs> right. Uh, That's right. Not That's my neighbor, who's an accountant. Right. <laughs> That's like, right. That's know, right. He said, oh, well, you know, I'm going to make a spreadsheet for you and try to determine your disease. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to the accountant. Right. <laughs> He's not going to have the tools or the right. expertise right. to tell me the medical issue that I'm facing. Yeah. Uh, I only take advice from people that I trust. That's yeah. good. And the people that are worth trusting. Yeah. Um, yeah, trust is at the foundation of walking in wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's good. Uh, we're, we're talking about making decisions, and if we want to make decisions that lead us in the correct way, we have yeah. to start to think, how do we walk yeah. in wisdom? Yeah. If you want to walk in wisdom, you've got to go to the one who is wise. Yeah. Uh, right. And trust that their advice is better than your own conclusions. That's, that's right. Good. That's right. Uh, and that's that's a key thing, right? Yeah. We can go to the yeah. one who is wise, which is something that maybe some of us often do, but right. we actually have to trust that their advice is better than that's ours. Good. Um, good. And the mm. first step in decision making is revealed in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 yeah. through 6. Mm -hmm. It says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm. Do not depend on your own understanding. Mm. There it is. Do not depend on your own understanding. Yeah. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you the path to take. Yeah. Um, yeah, good stuff there. Wisdom teaches us to trust in the right voices. Yes. Um, really interesting statistic here. On average, most of us make about 35,000 decisions every day. <laughs> wow. Decision that's overload, right? Yeah. 35,000. That's that's about 2,000 decisions wow. every hour. Wow. Um, and in the decision making, we decide whose voices will influence yeah. our lives. You that's know, we're, right. We're yeah. in the influencer era. Yeah. There, there's yeah, influencer for really everything. Right. That's right. Uh, there's books, there's podcasts, uh, yeah. experts, right. friends, family. Right. You know, yeah. everyone has an opinion. That's right. Um, but it, it really is up to us to decide who yeah. it is that we want to listen to. Yeah. Proverbs teaches us to trust in God exclusively. Trust mm -hmm. in the Lord yeah. with good. all your heart. Yeah. Don't depend on your own understanding. Why? Because mm -hmm. we don't always get things right. That's um, right. We face situations that yeah. we don't or we yeah. haven't encountered That's before, it. and our feelings are constantly changing. They yeah. are not a good indicator. They're not yeah. a good compass. Right, right. Yeah. But if I seek his will in my decisions, God promises to show me which path to take. That's yeah. right. That's Making right. the right choices starts with listening to the right voices. What yes. voices good. are you listening That's to? That's good. Mm. So I want to ask you folks, how do we discern the right voices to listen to? Yeah. How do we yeah. know? You know, one of my favorite scriptures is know them that labor among you. Mm -hmm. Right. And I often like to say, yeah. know them that labor with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With you, not just among you. But, yeah. you know, I think about when I think about um, who are the right people? right, to listen mm -hmm. to, those that mm -hmm. are going through the fire with That's me, right. those that have gone through the fire, and yeah. still God positioned them to hold my hand yeah. as I go through That's my good. journey and, you know, face those tough hurdles. When I got to that decision, yeah. I connected with people that were closest to me, the people that I knew would pray for me when I couldn't yeah. get a prayer out, That's right? Good. And I remember calling my best friend, um, Tasha Moore, and she said, I know that you're a woman of God that obeys yeah. God. It is not time to doubt God That's now. Right. That is your baby. Yeah. Right. Best decision that I made because yeah. I went to the right person. Yeah. And and God and I going to God, God said, Call Tasha. You don't, That's you know. Right. That's how gracious God was for yeah. me in that yeah. moment. Yeah. So yeah, knowing mm. those people that labor with me. Yeah. With and, me. And then knowing those people, the next step is asking do their behaviors line up there with their you beliefs? go that's like, right i'm not going to go to somebody and ask for parenting advice whose kids are running wild right mm -hmm. yeah. whose kids are wilding i'm like no <laughs> i want to go to somebody who like hey it looks good. like you kind of did something right here give me some parenting tips yeah. so yeah yeah I, I like what you both said um there's a, a Joseph proverb that I kind of like to live by. <laughs> okay, and, uh, from I'm, the book I'm gonna of say Joseph? It's a Joseph proverb. Yeah, yes. th this is not in the Bible, so don't, don't think it is. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I try to live by this. Uh, it's people can only give you advice that will lead you to become like them. That's, That's right. Good. People That's can only good. give you advice that will lead you to become That's like right. them. That's good. Uh, so when people give you advice, you kind of have to ask yourself, 
do I want to become like this person? Yeah, mm. um, that's it, good. It kind of resonates with a little bit of what you've both said. Um, yeah. yeah. And if not, if the answer is no, then maybe we should probably turn down the volume on their voice. Come on, Joseph. Because right. uh, there are a lot right. of people that will give you kind of that unsolicited right. advice, you know, that yeah. they'll be giving you all this advice that is just terrible. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, maybe it's not so terrible. I don't know. Right. Um, but you, you have to look at their life and really see, is this the person that I want to become? And if not... Turn the volume down. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I'd, I'd consider I'd turning up the volume on God. On, That's and what right. God is saying yeah. To, yeah. to you and That's what good. God is speaking into That's your good. life. Yes. Uh, whose voice have you been listening to? Really yeah. consider that question. That's good. Um, it, it really is at the root of a lot of the decisions that we make. Yeah. yeah. So as you go through the day, think about it. We all yeah. make decisions. Who mm -hmm. am I listening to? Whose advice am I mm -hmm. taking to? Yeah, or yeah. Whose advice am I taking here? Uh, yeah. We all kind of get into these these rhythms or these habits where we've made this decision yeah. a thousand times. Who informed that decision? Right. right. Think about right. it. Right. The best way that we can amplify God's voice, remember we're talking about turning down yeah. the volume and turning God's voice up, is, is to actually apply the wisdom that he gives us. Yeah. Um, That's good. Apply God's word in our lives. Yeah. And it starts by first listening to the voice of God. Mm -hmm. So when we consider the decisions that we make, we identify who is who's speaking into us, and then we replace it with what is God speaking uh, to yeah, us in this what space? Is he saying? So yeah, we start by listening, uh, and the primary way that we can listen to God's voice is through Scripture. That's right. Yes. Uh, what has God already spoken? Yeah. Um, that's good. There are a lot of people that will tell you this is what God's speaking. No, find out for yourself. That's Read right. the Scriptures. That's right. Read it. Study yeah. it. Yeah. Um, learn what God is speaking. Yeah. Um, it's really difficult to follow God's voice if we don't that's know good. what it actually is or that's what right. he's saying yeah. so that's my recommendation to you um turn your attention to scripture yeah turn your attention to the wisdom that is found in the word yeah if you want to turn up god's voice in your life start by reading scripture that's good. Yeah. his voice that's good. is that's the good. voice that we can trust yeah yeah turn down the volume on everything else yeah that's good um so pastor kim what else does proverbs teach us about making the best decisions? you know when i think about two thousand decisions per hour wow you know do that's i wear this does this go with this? Does yeah. this look okay? Do I look this way? Do, Do I, I look, look this that way? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two, that's a lot, you know. And so decision making can get hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can get hard. And I think there's times that I know I have experienced times when I feel pressured yeah. Yeah. to make a decision, right? Mm -hmm. And that's whether it's one of those. Uh, decisions in that 2000 that I've made in the last yeah. hour, mm -hmm. those ones that really stump me, right? Yeah. The decisions that I regret the most, Joseph, have been those that I've made under pressure, yeah. right? Under pressure. You think about um, peer pressure, yeah. right? Yeah. Peer pressure gets a bad rep, but there, mm -hmm. there's something to it, right? Yeah. I used yeah. to tell my kids, I don't care what they do, right? <laughs> That's right. The they, and I'm thinking they, every, all the other kids in the school, yeah. right? Um, mm -hmm. I want you to listen to me. But how many of us know rapid decisions often lead to regret? That's right. I can admit that. Yeah. I, Destiny, I've yeah. made some rapid decisions. Yep. That within 90 minutes, yeah, I regret like, it. Oops. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> How do I run away from this, right? Yeah. Um, listen to what God as a, as a hidden treasure. And we, we're, we're in this week of discovering hidden treasures around wisdom. But let's listen in that same scripture, in the yeah. same book, Proverbs 14 and 15. It reads, only simpletons believe everything they're told. <laughs> That's <Whoa>. right. <laughs> but the prudent carefully consider their steps. Yeah. That's good. Am that I going to be simple-minded mm. or am mm. I going to be more prudent? That's right. Am I, when I have the opportunity to consider yeah. my options, and how many of us know you can consider options or consequences, That's right? right. That's First, right. Um, the Bible knew, I believe, Pastor Beth, that we yeah. would be reading this in 2024. That's right. That's right. 2024, you can turn on the news yeah. and, you know, an hour of <laughs> rapid decision-making. Yeah all across this world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're in a place where it's false news everywhere. Um, yeah. Wisdom 101 tells us that we can't believe everything that we're told. How many of us fall in that trap? You kind right. of believe everything yeah. you're told. Yeah. If Google said it, and when I grew up, we didn't have Google Joseph. We <laughs> had this right. thing called Ask Jeeves. Oh, okay. Uh, do you guys remember Ask Jeeves? I remember that Okay. One. 
Yeah, if Jeeves said it, I didn't even know who Jeeves was. <laughs> okay, I sure thought it was short for something, Jeffrey something. or somebody. But if he said it, he did That's the research, right. it good as, it's good as gold, right? Mm -hmm. But how many of us know not everything no. you read on the internet is factual, That's right? right? That's um, right. Next, we're encouraged to carefully consider our steps, mm. right? I think about it, but do I take a pause and consider my step leaning into that, right? Leaning into that decision. Have you ever been walking in a place where you have to watch your step, right? Yeah. You break something in the kitchen, right? You know that it's a glass, it's a plate. You're immediately going to begin to watch where you walk, That's right? right? Yeah. You don't want to, um, you know, step on any of the shards of glass. That's we right. pay attention to it, right? Yeah. And you move, you find yourself moving slowly. Mm -hmm. Right? Simple as that. It's almost like life has to come with something really sharp yeah. to hit us, true. to get That's us, true. to slow down, yeah. right? We live in such a fast-paced yeah. world uh, where there's pressure to mm -hmm. do everything yeah. now. Right. You should know this now. Mm -hmm. They have it now, so why don't I have it now, That's right? right? Um, but wisdom says slower is better. Yeah. I, I, one of the amazing things, and you know I love kitchen gadgets. I think one of the amazing <laughs> things ever created was mm -hmm. the air fryer. <laughs> That's right. The air fryer, right? <laughs> how many of us know I love fried chicken, but how many of you know the old way cast iron skillet, I had a lot of wounds, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. the, this grease popping and That's everything, right. Right? That's right? But now it can just kind of take its way slowly mm -hmm. in the lovely air fryer. <laughs> Slower is better. <laughs> when we're faced with those um, decisions that are more significant, Right. I implore you, take time for consideration. That's good. Hit the pause and yeah. pray. That's um, good. If we pray we and ask God for wisdom, I'm convinced he will respond. James yeah. tells us in chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, yeah. you should ask of God. That's good. That point where you need a decision, you, 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 you arrive to that That's point right. because you need wisdom. That's right. The scripture says, ask God. Yeah. And it, when, once you ask him, it tells us who gives generously That's to true. all without finding mm. fault. Mm. Yeah. Those decisions under pressure, good. I walk away and I feel to blame. Yeah. There's a fault mechanism yeah. to that. And it doesn't feel good, right? And the scripture says if we gener he gives it to all who are fine without yeah. finding fault, it'll be given to you. So if we yeah. lack wisdom, ask God. You know, when we slow down, we hit pause, we pray and ask God for wisdom. Mm. What that does is allow God's space to speak. Yeah. I want you to think about that this week. In those pockets of those decisions under pressure, yeah. just take a 90-second pause and mm -hmm. say, God, I'm going to pause to allow That's you good. space That's to good. speak. Don't get on your knees. You might not have time. You can't be at work. Yeah. Somebody snap at you, and you're the mm -hmm. Christian in the mm -hmm. office. And right now, those unchristian mm -hmm. words are coming to your vocabulary, <laughs> and you can't just belt them out. Take a pause yeah. and allow space for God to speak. Through prayer, we recognize and invite God as a partner. I need God to be yeah. a partner in my decision yeah. making. And as we go to God for direction or an answer, we create that space again for him to come in and help us navigate those diff difficult decisions. Yeah. Taking good. a moment to That's consider, good. consider God. So with that, why is it so difficult for us to slow down, mm -hmm. take time to consider the situation yeah. before making decisions? Why yeah. is that such a challenge? Oh, I think there are so many reasons. Yeah. I, it's such a packed question, yeah. right? Why is it so difficult for us? Um, I think for me, um, and I think for the people that fall into probably my same demographic, that we've probably bought into the idea that life is short and you've yeah. got to make a decision yeah. now, now, right? Yep. Uh, especially with questions of like, oh, what career are you going to take, mm -hmm. right? Like what uh, what mm -hmm. job do you want to do? What what degree? Mm -hmm. What uh, um, all, all these questions about yeah. purpose, significance, and you've got to make, make a decision right now. Mm -hmm. I think it, there is just so much pressure. And um, when we bind to the idea that life yeah. is short, I think That's we... Good it's just reflected in all the things that we do. There's just some underlying anxiety yeah. that if I don't make a decision now, um, I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out on, on what is at hand. And then we end up just making terrible decisions yeah. <laughs> yeah. because yeah. We, we don't know that if we yeah. really just took the time to slow down uh, and things, think things through, good things could actually result from yeah. that also. I think we have that pressure to just act now. 
Yeah. You know, we, yeah. we, we kind of come in the Instagram, Instacart, Insta everything. Yeah. And, and when people ask me for something, how many of you have ever been there? Somebody asks you, I don't care if it's for a favor. Uh, sometimes I get yeah. calls, hey, can you come speak at this conference, this and that. And right away I feel pressure to get, give a quick answer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And usually if I give a quick answer, I'm reacting, mm-hmm. not responding. Mm-hmm. And yeah, God is good. saying, hey, don't just react. Take time to make a uh, uh, pause to pray. Right. Slow down to consider and give a healthy response. So mm-hmm. now sometimes this is just a little tool put in your back pocket. Yeah. Some of you are taking yeah. notes. Some of you should be taking notes. Uh, mm-hmm. When somebody asks you something, don't give them an answer. Say, can I get back to you later on later. this? Later, yeah. 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 Like somebody's waiting for an answer from me. I said, can I get back to you next week? I need to think about this. Mm-hmm. I need to look at my calendar. I need to pray about it, right? Don't feel the pressure to respond right then. Yeah, mm-hmm. I yeah. love it. I love it. You know, I, I shared the hardest decision and, um, that I've had to make, you know, We all want to make the right decisions, right? And making the right decisions requires some key elements, right? It requires critical thinking. When that that option came to me, I had to really be critical in thinking. Mm -hmm. What what, what is this going to do for my life? God, you know, and that directed, my critical thinking directed my prayer. God, I know you're going to look out for me. Careful evaluation, where am I? Right. Mm-hmm. My baby was 10. God, do I still have it in me? God right. said I would supply your needs. Wow. Right. Um, and then consideration of all available options. Yeah. Right. You know, and the Lord said, I've given you a heart to That's love good. my people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This baby That's is, right. is one of mine. That's right. Right. And so when I took those elements, right, mm-hmm. gave careful consideration, mm-hmm. I knew without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. I needed to make the right decision. Remember, yeah. taking time for consideration and understanding God's yeah. timing can yeah. lead to wisdom and better decisions. How many of That's us good. need better decisions That's in right. our life? That's right. right. Doesn't mean that we're going to do it with every decision. Yeah. But if we begin to practice this methodology, yeah. I'm going to pause and seek God. Yeah. I guarantee you those decisions will yeah. get easier because That's we're good. going to trust God. Pastor Bell, what else can we, what else can help us to make better decisions? We yeah. need help in this area. Yeah. So <laughs> you talked about making decisions quickly and that, you know, rapid mm-hmm. often leads to regret. I would say the decisions that I've often regretted are decisions I've made in isolation. Mm. They've been yeah. decisions I've made yeah. just alone. And so I want to talk for a minute about this hidden treasure that can help us bring us from a place of uh, making isolating decisions to transformational decisions. Proverbs 15.22 says this, one of my favorite scriptures, plans go wrong for lack of advice. Yeah, yeah. Many advisors Uh bring success, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, And so... Notice this, this teaches that we benefit from having many advisors, not just one, not just two, many mm-hmm. advisors. You ever hear of getting a second opinion? You ever go to the doctor? You ever, yeah. you know, <laughs> I, I, I took my car to the mechanic once and they're like, oh yeah, that's all messed up. It's going to be thousands of dollars. So I was like, eh, let me get a second opinion. A second right? opinion. Then I took yeah. it to somebody else. He's like, this is a quick fix. We can fix this for a couple hundred dollars. I'm like, thank God, right? Yes, yes. Uh, thank God for second opinions. Yes. They were reading Proverbs 15. But what does the voice of wisdom sound like in our mm. lives? When you think of collective wisdom, uh, by the way, that's the beauty of the family of God. That's why we should right. just watch church online. That's why that's we should right. come Connection. and physically be a part of a community yeah, and a family that. because we need other voices in that's our lives. Real. And I don't know about you, but nobody can get to know me from behind my screen at home, right? right. I need to be in proximity with people. Yes. And so I commend you for showing up this morning to yes. church to be a part of God's family. Um, there's an author that uh, her name is Ruth Haley Barton, and she coined this phrase, sacred echoes. And, and she has this concept, just like based on Proverbs 15, that God doesn't just speak through us through one way. He speaks through us to us through many, many ways. ways. Yeah, I love uh, that. She says God speaks to us through his word, Yeah, right? Uh, you talked about that. Uh, what does God's word have to say? By the way, 
Uh, we are all journeying through Proverbs together as a church community. If you yeah. missed the QR code, we're going to put it back up there. Grab your phone right now. Take a picture of this QR code and just jump in with us. We're w- reading one chapter yes. of Proverbs every day. It's been so much fun because people will go on there and comment like, hey, this is cool. And we can all read each other's comments. So yeah. it's like a big group Bible study yes. uh, Monday through Saturday every week. So I invite you to join us. So that's one way that Ruth Haley Barton says. The second one is the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many times have you gotten ready to do something and there's just a little red flag? Yeah. It says, don't do it. That's right. That's the Holy Spirit yes. saying, don't do it. Or there's a green light saying, go for it, right? That's the Holy Spirit oftentimes yes. if we pause and listen. Uh, and then other times, there's just other people in our lives, right? I remember one time somebody had offered me a job, and I was convinced this was my dream job. I was like, I'm going to take it. I'm, <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh-huh. I'm going to this job. But I, I paused and I called a friend. I yeah. called an advisor and I said, and this is a woman who prays. Right. There's fruit in her life. So I said, hey, I'm thinking about taking this other job. I'm feeling real green lights here. What do you think? And she paused and yeah. she said what I didn't want to hear. She says, you know, something in me just says, wait, don't accept it wow. quite yet. Wow. God is not finished with you yet where you are. Yeah. Would yeah. you believe the next week, Pastor Kim? I got a huge promotion at the job that I was in. Thank God for the That if I would have left, I would have missed the the whole thing, right? And so thank God for those advisors. So God is speaking, and it's our job to pay attention to the sacred echoes. And and what you want to pay attention to is what what's the sacred echo that's the same Mm -hmm. what's the same in god's word what's the same in the holy spirit what's the same with people around me yes right when i was deciding to plant a church when i ran it past my friends they're like of course god has called you to this we've seen it for years i'm like really you saw that for years (laughs) you didn't tell me (laughs) right i didn't see Uh, the holy spirit was speaking to me god's word was confirming it and so the echoes were all lining wow. up in the same direction. Yeah. Pay attention powerful, powerful. to the sacred echoes Echo. in our lives. You know, God gives us the secret weapon of wisdom for decision making. The question is, will we use it? Mm. Will we use it or will we keep playing battleship? Mm-hmm. <laughs> will we just be like uh, D3? Uh, I don't know. Maybe hit or miss. Right. And we just make decisions brainlessly. You know, this was a fun game when I was eight. Right. 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 (laughs) Making decisions like that and kind of playing games is kind of fun when you're young. But how many know, like you said, stepping into adulthood, it's a different story. we got to slow down and hear the sacred echoes of what God is saying. When we learn to listen to the sacred echoes, it gives us two things. Direction for decision. Yes. And protection for making the bad choices. Right. How many know I need direction, but I also want God to protect me That's right. from making the wrong decisions. That's and here's powerful. the reality. I've been in ministry. Greg and I have been in ministry for 30 years now. I have seen people make decisions like that, like they're playing Battleship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll just do this. I'll just do that. Well, what has God said? Well, I don't know. I'm just looks like a good looks fun. Right. Yeah. What is the Lord saying to you? What's the word saying? What's the Holy Spirit saying? Yeah. Uh, what are your friends who know you most think of this movie. Right, right. Uh, And so I promise you, if you unearth the hidden treasure of wisdom, God's going to give you direction, and he's going to give you protection. So I want to thank the table team for being with us today. 